In this video, we're going to look at the highly anticipated LZX TBC2 dual input synchronizer. This module allows you to incorporate two simultaneous external image sources. These can come from the host of video inputs, from a built-in media player, or a built-in ramp generator. The two independent decoders sync automatically to the resolution and frame rate of the rest of the system. There are then two sets of final outputs featuring a Y and RGB outs, and these can be used for any of the external inputs or the internal media or ramp generators. Each output also has a built-in crossfader so you can do mixes of any of those four image sources. It's a very deep and complex module. In lieu of our usual three patch format, for this video, we're just gonna explore some of the features. We're recording this video in January of 2023. Over the coming months, you can expect more features and gradual improvements to the user interface. So think of this video more as just a basic how to get started with the TBC2. When you first boot up, you get to a system menu that gives you a bunch of information about your sync settings and other useful information, including the ability to save your sessions and update your firmware. Navigating the TBC2 will be familiar to anybody who's used a memory palace. It uses a very similar set of interface buttons. There's a red button, up, down, and a yellow button. The red button allows you to jump through different pages. So if you push it once, you go to decoder A. And decoder A is this first column of inputs. Here I have just a camera. And let me get an output set up here so we can start to see something on the video screen. So I'm just taking the RGB out from the encoder A output. And I'm gonna put that into a matrix mixer just cause we know eventually we're gonna go somewhere else. Decoder A is showing me a video camera. This just pointed out my window. And so we can see the output there. If I scroll down, I have controls for adjusting the hue, saturation, brightness, contrast. So to select something, you use the arrow to select, say, hue. Then you're going to push your yellow button to enter into edit mode. The uh, parameter will turn yellow. And then you can use the arrow keys to adjust. Push the yellow button again when you're done, and it'll save the setting. So we can adjust saturation, the brightness. and the contrast. So it's pretty cool to have these basic color correction features in there. I do believe there's a plan to add some more stuff in here, but we'll see. And then once you're done with all your edits, always make sure to push the yellow button again. That sort of saves them. And then uh, the red button will take you again to the next page. So the next page is decoder B. And here I have another video source. This is coming from a Raspberry Pi that's just playing back a video file. Uh, so here we have all the same sort of things going on. You've got your hue, saturation, brightness, and contrast controls. And either of these can take component inputs, uh, standard composite video, or S-video inputs. They also have an external sync input. And there's an expander that allows you to use VGA or SCART inputs as well. So obviously we can use both of these outputs at the same time. So let me hook these up here. And now we've got two synchronized video sources. Um, I think just, just for the purposes of demonstration, uh, I put my video player into PAL and my video camera is set to NTSC. So you see it has no problem synchronizing different video formats. My output is actually 1080 at a 60i. So I've got three different video formats and TBC2 does a great job of synchronizing them all behind the scenes. So I don't even have to think about what I'm plugging into where. I don't have to set anything in the menus, it just does it. So once you get past the two decoder screens, then you've got a media loader and a ramp generator. And I wanna get back to these in a second uh, because first I wanna talk about the encoders. So you have encoder A and encoder B. 
And on each of these screens, you have the ability to crossfade between two different sources. I had this set up in a way that maybe made it look like this always goes to A and this always goes to B, but that's not the case. So let me unplug B just so we don't get confused here. And let me put this into A so we also don't get confused. So looking at encoder A, I can actually switch my sources. So right now I have it set to input A, but I can also set it to input B, which is my Raspberry Pi. I could set it to uh, media, which is a built-in media loader, or I can set it to the ramp, which is a built-in ramp generator. So let me go back to input A. And then we also have a second source for each of these encoders. So if I go to source B, uh, I could load, say, the media, and we won't really see anything until we adjust this crossfader. So there's a uh, little crossfader here. So I can crossfade in between A and B. And you can also control this via a MIDI input, but this is a pretty cool feature to have built into something like this. I can switch over to encoder B and encoder B, again, I could select, let's say the ramp generator. And I've got my crossfader all the way to the other uh, direction. So select my crossfader again, and then I can crossfade in between that ramp and my encoder. But for now, I'm gonna keep this on ramp, encoder B. We'll get both of these plugged in again. And I'm gonna go back to encoder A and set this just to the media loader so we can take a closer look at these features. So I'm gonna plug in A and B into two channels of the matrix mixer. Okay, so now we've got encoder A set to our media loader and B set to our ramp. And I'd like to talk a little bit more about these features since we skipped over them. The media loader is super cool. Um, it reads off the SD card that's built in uh, and you can build little looping animations. Uh, this is kind of similar to what you were able to do with uh, later firmware revisions of the memory palace. That's a little bit more robust, I think. Um, so you can load different folders in each of those folders, you can have images, you can have up to 24 that will loop, which is what I'm doing right now. So let me pause that. And then you've got simple controls to go back to the first frame in the sequence, to play the sequence, to play just one frame at a time. And of course you can use MIDI to control this. You could stop. You can also, there's a random feature but for now, I'm just going to have this uh, 24 frame thing loop. So this is a very cool way to load in gradients or different still images or logos or text or anything else you may want. So pushing again, we get to the ramp generator. And the ramp generator has a very cool randomized feature on it. Um, so you just push randomize and then you get a new ramp. It kind of slows down the whole system for a second. Um, but it's capable of generating some pretty wild things. These are also full RGB ramps, which is pretty neat. Then we can just clear the ramp and that's gonna reset it back to zero. And then you can also just generate your own ramps to your own specifications. So you could switch them between all your familiar ramp options. You've got linear and logarithmic. You've got horizontal or vertical. You can adjust the phase, which is pretty cool. Um, and you have separate ramps for the red, green, and blue channel. So what that means is that you can create three totally independent ramps and use them for three totally independent purposes. So I've set these back to my two video inputs. Again, one is coming from a live video camera, just pointed out the window, and the other is playing off of Raspberry Pi. And let's just quickly get a little keyer set up here. So we've just been doing an additive mix of these two. Let's see what happens when we put these into the FKG3. 
So you can see here now in full color, we are using the video coming into B to key out the video that's playing in A. And this is so easy and so fast to get going with these Gen 3 modules. A very common effect for something like a broadcast video mixer that until now has been really complicated to achieve with any type of modular video system. So I'm gonna just grab this video camera here for a second, see if we can get something. Start feeding back, yeah. Something a little more fun. And now we've got some feedback. Just coloring this. And so now my camera's just on the floor. <laughs> but it still looks pretty cool because it's got that great key going on. So one other thing we can try is uh, getting some feedback from the output of the system itself. So I just switched my whole system to NTSC, uh, and that's just to get this CVBS output working. You could also do this in HD, but you would need some way to split this component signal, which I currently don't have. Um, so I unplugged that camera that was going into the input A, and now I'm going to take the output from my whole system out into B. So now I've got the same uh, keyer set up, but here, I'm keying it against feedback. So you can see the uh, just purely electronic feedback coming from the output of the system back into the input on the TBC2. And of course here, if I go to my decoder A, and if I play around with some pretty extreme saturation and hue effects, let's see, just pump the saturation way up you'll start to get some of the uh, characteristic rainbow nightmares of uh, video mixer feedback. And of course, anything you change on the encoder is gonna have a pretty drastic effect here. I could try plugging in an external key here. Try like a shape. From the shape generator. And of course we could add some threshold CV here. Now let's try a little oscillator. So there you go. The TBC2 is really the missing piece in opening up a lot of effects you might be familiar with from video switchers or mixers like the Adderall V4. Of course, one of my favorite tricks of the V4 was plugging the outputs back into the inputs for these types of tricks. So this is a very cool thing to play with. So that's just a very, very basic look at the TBC2 uh, and how you can get started with it and a few of the things it's capable of. And it really is just such a joy to be able to easily integrate all of these different types of video sources into a system. This used to be a major headache and uh, typically relied on a number of external pieces of equipment or these really kind of like duct tape together solutions. So to have something this simple and efficient where you can get like a basic A over B keyer from two external video sources in just a matter of seconds is a pretty incredible thing. I look forward to exploring this module more in future videos, but I hope this at least helps you get started with your TBC2. Please leave any questions in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching.